Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art and BitamountLive.com in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, uh, May 14th, 2021. And this is our weekly video, a look at last week's eBay auction results, what's going over and on at uh, Bitamount Live this week. We're gonna start uh, including more things about that as the site is growing and uh, what's happened at Catawiki and a few other things. If you haven't checked yet today, we did do a video earlier this morning on the uh, Roger Caverne sale that took place over at Bonhams this uh, past week in London on the 11th. It was a terrific sale. Uh, it did what we all thought it would do. It went way beyond all of its estimates in most of the cases. Everything did well. It was 100% sold, and it was a real barometer of where the market is, so it's worth seeing, um, and, and, and uh, it's gonna, I think it's going to uh, uh, sort of clear the air with a lot of, a lot of sellers on one on, on what prices should be. Uh, in, in Roger's case, he opted to let the market decide what his things are worth rather than dictate through uh, high estimates and high reserves, and it was phenomenally successful. Uh, that's the old school way of doing it. Put your stuff up and let the world tell you what it's worth. A couple of things I wanted to cover um, to start tonight, today, which is kind of fun. Um, there's a sale taking place that Christie's has, and it's not an Asian art sale. But there's a piece of there's a jade necklace that um, uh, it's the sale is called Magnificent Jewels. It's taking place on the 23rd. But in the sale is this is this absolutely stupendous uh, jade necklace uh, that they have. It's got a, a the estimate is 26 to 35 million Hong Kong, which is around four to five million dollars U.S. Uh, and absolutely, if you want to see what an absolutely superb jade necklace looks like, uh, skip over to Christie's and take a look at this. The color of these uh, these stones, of, of each one of these jade beads, is absolutely incredible. Uh, the, the coloration is superb. It's set with the, uh, the tide with a diamond clasp and all that. But just an absolutely breathtaking uh, necklace. Uh, made out of uh, you know perfectly matched jade uh, beads, all the way through. They 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 almost look like they've been xeroxed one after another. Absolutely superb, and uh, has a uh, a big estimate to go with it. And as an aside, something else. I'm, and this is this has really nothing to do with anything to do with the Asia. In the same sale is the largest um, uh, internally flawless pink diamond that the Ge Gemological Institute of America has ever seen. And that is in the sale coming up. It's estimated at 25 to 35 million dollars. This is the diamond, um, and it is uh, the, you know, about as high a grade as a diamond, a diamond could possibly ever get. And the GIA wrote a certificate attesting to the fact that as of the date they looked at it, which was a few months ago, it's it's the it's the it's the the best large stone they've ever seen. And that's that's in the Christie sale in Hong Kong. I'll be fascinated to see what it brings. It's estimated at 195 to 300 thousand Hong Kong dollars. So you divide that by eight, you're, you're looking at uh, 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 three and a half to five million for this ring. At any rate, sort of an interesting aside. What's going on in the art market um, these days? And uh, those two. That, that this sale also has a lot of other good. If you're looking for, if you like Chinese jade, it has some very fine Chinese jade jewelry. Um, if, if you're into that as well as Chinese antiques, uh, check it out. There's some, some excellent uh, bits of jade in the sale. All righty. Now, over on the uh, Bit Amount Live site, uh, the, as I've said each week, the listings keep growing. Um, uh, things are coming in over and over, and, you know, more and more and more. It's good to see. And uh, some of the things that have popped up are, are things like this. This very nice Kangxi period, almost Kaki Amon decorated uh, uh, period uh, teapot. It's a wonderful thing. The seller's asking $996, which seems right about in the range. I think a few months ago we saw one quite like this that sold on eBay in about the It's got a couple of minor hairlines for about the same condition. I think sold for $1,600. So I don't think it's a bad buy at all. I think it's a pretty good buy and uh, very, very nicely decorated. And there's also this, this really nice Edo period Amari Arita charger, or flower dish rather. And what's interesting about it is that we've seen these before, um, but this one has double flower pots in the center. Usually it's one flower pot in the center, if you think back, and then, and then you know, and then the, the outside cavetto. This has two in it, which I think makes it sort of interesting. All right, and it's, it's a, you know, the seller's asking a modest price, $229 for it. Uh, which is perfectly fine. And then this, this great big rose mandarin um, uh, basin. 
uh, came in uh, ten, first half of the or mid 19th century, 1850s or so, in uh, a very nice condition, and uh, it's been posted on there for $1,299, and, and it, it's, it's a good-looking thing. All right, so just just as that was just something that's happening over on the Bitamount Live pages. And listings that keep coming in. And as I said last week, the more the site populates, this week we did spend quite a bit of time. Um, uh, we did some SEO on the site. We, we posted a lot of the images over onto our Pinterest account because it gets a lot of activity. We've got hundreds of followers on that. And uh, put some over on the Bitamount uh, site over on Facebook and uh, pushing that all of these along and alt tagging the images. If you forget to do it, we're going to go in and we're going to help, help do them for you. Okay. Now, on to uh, what's going on on the Bitamount Global, uh, Global member pages. There's a couple of good sales coming up. You want to keep your eyes out for them. Uh, one of them is this one. This is Carlo Bonte. He has a sale in Belgium coming up. And in it, he's got this really nice uh, late Ching Hu form vase uh, with slip decoration with, with floating Buddha symbols all over it. Very nice looking form. This is sort of an unusual one. I like it a lot, actually. I like the color. It's got some fritting up around the top, which is pretty normal. Uh, the bottom of it looks absolutely fine. There's the foot rim on it. Looks perfectly fine all the way around. Uh, very nice. It's got an estimate of 1,000 to 1,500 uh, euros, which seems right about in the range. Opening bid of $700 US. All right. The other thing is uh, this is also uh, Waddington's. There's a sale coming up in five days over in, in, in up in Toronto, Canada. And they have some very nice Japanese uh, uh, things and chi uh, Chinese things. All right, so they have these sets of Japanese dishes. They've got, uh, is this the same thing? Yeah, this is the same thing. Chinese export uh, 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 platter with a, a, a British ship on it, but very, very fine uh, Fitzhugh quality. Really, really, really fine. A very fine piece of export. If you're an export buyer, you want to check it out. And this one is, uh, what size is this? It's pretty good size, as I recall. It's about uh, 17, yeah, 17 inches in diameter. It's a big one. and uh, But it appears to be in wonderful condition. So if you're a China trade collector, check out Waddington's up in uh, Toronto, Canada. They get nice things. And uh, they also have this, this very nice Kangxi 100 Antiques model, uh, uh, very nicely shaped, good color, uh, they, they have, they, and they provide lots of pictures. Uh, here's a nice shot of the bottom of it. Looks absolutely fine. Um, what's that sign on it? Michael B. Oh, Weisbrod. This was sold by Michael Weisbrod. He's a very uh, well-known Asian art dealer. It's got an old tag on the bottom for $6,000. It's estimated at four to 5,000 Canadian, which is, uh, you know, uh, about 25 percent lower than the U.S. dollar, so it looks it looks pretty good, and you can bid at Waddington's on that. And then they have this very nice Chinese uh, export Famille Rose teapot, uh, Yongchen period, from what I can see. And this is Alex Cooper. This is a sale that's taking place tomorrow um, at Alex Cooper's in the U.S. He's got this. He's got that unusual big that unusual charger that's typically this pattern is typically I mentioned it last week is typically done in a plate form, but this is a charger, which makes it very interesting. It's got one bit at 350. It should go for uh, you know triple or more of that, but uh, you want, you might want to chase that down if you're a Famille Rose collector. And um, uh, this is coming up in a sale. There's a robe sale coming up. Uh, this is uh, East West Auctions in in Fanwood, New Jersey. Um, I think the estimate is very high, but uh, I don't know what the reserve is. So if you want, if you want to check these guys out, uh, go ahead and, and get a sense of it. These robes these days typically are selling in the uh, eight to ten thousand, eleven thousand dollar range. There was just one that sold uh, last week. I think it was at Bonhams, and brought uh, ten and a half thousand pounds, something like that. All right. Now, over on the bid amount uh, newsletter page, uh, it was a pretty good week. I noticed something funny, though, this week. There's been a huge decline in listings for auctions uh, from sellers in the EU for some reason in the last um, two weeks. I don't know why, because we, we have certain searches that we run each week, and generally we come up with uh, hundreds of possibilities that we go through to include in the newsletter that we like. This week, there were less than 70 li listings. And I don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe everybody's gone on vacation. But uh, there's been a very large decline in EU sellers using eBay. And uh, I'd love to know what's going on with that. And if anybody knows, leave a comment on it, okay? Uh, now, what sold uh, last week was this. This was a, a, a seller in Hereford in the UK. 
had this nice cafe au lait and underglazed blue triple gourd, uh, rather interesting rose water, uh, rose water sprinkler bottle, typically made for the Middle East and Indian market and so forth. Nice looking one, sold for $993. Very attractive. And uh, then over to this, this was the bamboo pattern uh, bowl and cover, uh, Qing Dynasty, 19th century. Uh, there's uh, lots of script on it and so forth. This sold last week. Very, very nice example. From, this was from Ancient Legends at it in Amsterdam. Sold for $1,055. Nice tight pattern. These do turn up in some of the big auction houses once in a while. And that's at Bonhams and so forth. This is in their gallery sales is sort of what the price range they bring. So I think 1055 was fine for that. And uh, the other thing that I saw last week, and I put this, I put these in the newsletter on Bitima because I thought these were just so pretty. It was a very lovely pair of uh, 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 late Yong Chen to early Chin Lung uh, cups, Famille Rose cups, but beautifully done with underglazed blue and overglazed decoration. Quite nice. Often it's just overglazed Famille Rose at this, at this time. This one, these had both underglaze and overglaze, and the shading was very, very nice. And uh, I think they went for a reasonable price, $310 for the pair. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. And uh, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get something top quality. All right. And then this, this did very well. This was that transitional jar that had cracks in it. Thing hit everything but the lottery. And um, it's got these, these cracks here and here. But it's, it, is a, it is a leaping fish jar, which makes it so, uh, sort of desirable. Uh, this, this particular pattern with a leaping carp and swimming carp like this down here. Uh, uh, people like to collect these. But it's got old staple repairs in it and all this. And I thought, well, I might bring, you know, 1500 bucks or something. Of course, the, this, the, uh, the cover and stands were very, very nice. They're probably worth $1,000. any rate, um, in the end, this did very, very well. Uh, it brought $3,506. All right. Even though it had been staple repaired and so forth. All right. So there you go. The other thing I liked a lot that was in the sale last week that was on, on there was a 19th century uh, Kuan Yin with a spotted deer. And I thought this was made out of, out of uh, probably uh, 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 ox horn or something, some sort of horn. It's not rhino horn. It's just regular you know, cattle horn or something. Uh, but beautifully carved. The facial expression on the uh, f figure in particular was very, very nice. I don't know if they have a better picture of it. Uh, no, they didn't give any really good close-up. But the quality of the carving is really, really nice. I like the way the spots on the deer are done. She's carrying a, a piece of fungus, fungi in her hand. Here it is, and here's the deer. Very, very nicely done. This was a good piece. Ended up selling for $706, which is fine. But that was a nice example, probably second half of the mid-19th century. Uh, but, but, but beautiful quality and uh, beautifully finished. And the carver did a good job incorporating the shape of the horn into his carving. So it's obviously wider at the bottom than comes to a point. And uh, the hair is finished up beautifully. And then this, this very nice, simple gold ground uh, Chinese needlework that has the uh, skirt at the bottom like you see on robes and that kind of thing. This was a seller up in New Hampshire, Steve, that we know. Uh, he, he gets out, he's a good picker. He's always looking. And uh, this was a nice piece of silk, perfectly good and went reasonably. It had 21 bids and went for uh, $300. And that's Coast-to-Coast uh, -coast Antiques up in uh, uh, Newport, New Hampshire. Uh, he's been around for years. He's an old-school dealer. All right, and then the uh, the, the uh, cup. Uh, we talked about this at some length last last week because of the, the history of the cup and what it symbolized, and you have the rifles supporting it at the bottom, and it was part of the Volunteer Corps, uh, which was a private, sort of a private militia group within the uh, foreign uh, uh, expat community that worked with the Chinese government in China um, uh, to provide security and so forth. It's got a, quite a long history, about 80 years it was it was ongoing thing. And they used to give these silver cups out as, uh, as uh, mementos for, for service to the organization or if you rose to a certain rank and so forth. And it did well. In the end, it sold for $1,750. It was very attractive in, in a nice history. History on these things is often as interesting as the pieces themselves, obviously. And then on to these, the Republic period uh, ladies, uh, court ladies. Uh, these were very, very pretty. These were not extremely old. These were, you know, early you know, uh, 20th century Republic works. There's a stamp on the bottom, but very fine quality. Um, a crazy, crazy quality. Just absolutely beautiful. The faces, the glazes, all the little details. Just a very nice pair of figures. And as I recall, these were good size. I think these were... 
17 inches maybe or something or 42 centimeters high so they were uh, about 15 inches tall yeah they're a good size and they ended up selling for 2234 us or 1591 pounds which is about right for those that they're very nice and i wouldn't have been surprised if they'd gone for three or four thousand even all right because there's a growing interest in these very fine um actual real republic pieces because real republic pieces aren't as common as they as i've said before as people often think and then on to this this was something we put in the newsletter because i just thought it was terrific this is a really nice probably some some varietal rosewood inlaid with um with uh, wire wire inlaid of, uh, of the Lohan, um, beautifully done. He's got his teeth, his glass eyes, and all that. But the quality of the work, the quality of the carving on this was very, very fine. It really was. It was very, very fine. For some strange reason, the primary shot they used was his head, and I don't think that was very effective. I think it might have done a little better if they'd showed this picture, for example. Uh, the, the quality of carving of the staff, the old root staff, and the way the robes are done, and then the metal, metallic inlay and this wonderful rocky base that they carved for him um, is beautiful. And this thing was big. It was 17 inches tall, and it brought $406. I think that was a fantastic buy for somebody who likes to buy uh, uh, Chinese wood carvings or Asian wood carvings in general. It's just very attractive. All right. And then the uh, little uh, teapot with its silk cozy that I, I thought was just charming bit of, you know, uh, 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 cultural object just a very interesting thing uh, i like i like the needlework as much or more than the teapot i just like the whole package i like things like this the, the domestic items and uh, somebody paid 393 dollars for it which is absolutely fine it's a nifty thing it's a very nice thing all right you can and you can use it and then the big moon flash with the cobalt ground and mandarin scenes mid 19th century with femi june upper and lowers uh you know around the top and the bottom and the uh, unusual sort of elephant uh, 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 applied handles or whatever beast handles that are on here are very interesting. And uh, it ended up they ended up going for twenty seven hundred and fifty dollars, even though they'd been drilled. These had been previously drilled as lamps. They were over fifteen inches tall, though they were nice size. So and somebody paid twenty seven fifty for them. I think undrilled they probably would have brought well over four or five thousand, but uh, still really nice. And then this, the Famille Rose uh, Mandarin uh, dish, beautifully decorated, late 18th century export style porcelain. Um, uh, I like the whole thing, lots of activity, uh, dancers and birds in the foreground and then observers up above and so forth. And uh, um, uh, th these fellows seem to be carrying in some sort of gift. These are the musicians over here playing. It's just a sort of a fun, like a festival scene. And uh, the plate ended up selling for $647. Uh, but very nice quality. This was a seller in, in the West Country over in the UK, uh, uh, Stadby54. Uh, he doesn't come on here a lot. When he does, he typically has nice things. And the plate was eight inches in diameter, but very, very pretty. All right. And then lastly was the cobalt charger uh, with gilt decoration on it. Uh, this is a hard thing to photograph because it looks like there's more gilding missing than there is really. But when you look at the rest of the pictures, you see the gilding was quite intact. All right. The first picture makes it look like it's worn off. And then if you click in a few and get, get some other pictures, you find out you find that the gilding is actually all intact. And it's just it's just washing out under the lights they used, unfortunately. But this was a nice thing and ended up selling for fifteen hundred and seventy three dollars. And again, a seller over in uh, Edinburgh in, in the United Kingdom. But nice looking. And this was good size. Uh, thirty two centimeters. It was a charger. It was over a four foot wide. Very attractive. And then this was one of the little bargains that slipped through over on um, Catawiki this week. Uh, sort of a rare form, small, um, uh, like a, like a, 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 almost like a butter terrine, um, but because uh, it wasn't terribly big, seven, seven by fifteen centimeters, so it was six inches long, but very nicely decorated, very bright colors for three hundred and twenty-three euros. Not bad at all. And uh, there was this, the uh, Japanese dish that Catawiki had up. It looks like Ming. It looks like a Ming dish. It even has a Chenwa mark on the back, but it's actually a Rita ware. Uh, but very unusual pattern. Really unusual with beautifully done dragons all the way across it. And uh, here it is. But when you, when you flip the thing over and you see the back right away, you know it's Japanese because it's got this broad, flat 
uh, foot rim on it, a spur mark in the center, and Chenhua mark. And uh, as everybody knows, the reed of porcelain um, in the 18th and 19th century, especially, um, uh, they would have Chenhua marks on them from the Chinese plates. But also notice how nicely done the outer border was, the, uh, the outside of the bowl with these flowers and vine devices, just really charming. Very, very charming. I liked that. I liked that a lot. And in the end, it did pretty well. It ended up selling for 700 euros or around $850. But it's a rare type, very pretty, and uh, quite unusual. And they dated it to um, the Meiji period, which it could be a little before that with that foot and that, those colors. It could be slightly before, maybe late 80, 1850, 1860s. But at any rate, it doesn't matter. It's a nice looking thing. It's real. It was made in the Arita provinces. All right, and then what's coming up, just a few things this week we're going to mention. Um, just to remind you, if you've been, a number of people I know are following these, uh, these uh, big cloisonne uh, uh, pheasant uh, uh, vases with the lions on the handles, the foo lion handles. Very nice looking. It's up to 1150. Closes on Saturday, tomorrow. And also, this was posted this week by a seller not far from here. I actually know this guy. He's, he's an extremely active seller. He has Essex River Antiques. He's got thousands of listings. He, he used to um, be, sell under the name Bubble King. And uh, I, he, had, you know, he has thousands of listings. He's a, he's a general buyer. He's a good buyer. Grew up in a family full of dealers. He knows what he's doing. And he came up with this very nice uh, Dewa Blanc de Chine libation cup. Very attractive. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what, that, what that does. All righty. And that's about it, okay, for the uh, week. If you haven't subscribed to us yet here on YouTube, please do. And if you haven't visited us over at Bitamount or bitamountlive.com, uh, join us over there. The bitamount.com uh, site has uh, the, the newsletter page, which is free, which those are the things we pick out each week to put on uh, um, that we find on eBay and Katawiki and other things. And you get an email on Fridays when it's updated. And the uh, Bitamount Live site is a site that we just started for our users. You don't have to be a, one of our regular people. Anybody can use it as long as the stuff is legit that we set up so that people that are getting a little tired of selling on other platforms, they can come there. It's easy. Uh, no hassle selling and set up your uh, own account and, 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 and sell your things. And you're welcome to be there as long as they're not fakes. Um, uh, if, you, if you offer uh, fakes, we're, we're, we will remove them. Um, but, but if you have nice things, you're more than welcome to join us over there, okay? Everybody have a great weekend. I'll be in the garden all day tomorrow and Sunday because uh, it's flower weekend. It's uh, going to be in the 70s here on Cape Ann. Beautiful weather coming up, and I can't wait to get that squared away. And uh, you all have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back next week. Um, and uh, we're going to be adding some more catalogs uh, probably Monday. I'd hope to do it today, but we got tied up with too many things. Um, uh, we've, we're going to have a bunch of new catalogs for the uh, uh, Christie's and, and, and Sotheby sales, the Hong Kong sales and all that. They're now available. We've got to generate them and get them up there, and they'll be in the reference section over off of bitamount.com. All right. Have a great weekend, and uh, see you all soon. See you next time. Bye-bye.